We're going to start simple and work our way up. Along the way, you'll start to see some of the things that SwiftUI makes easy and some of the things that SwiftUI makes, well, let's say less easy. In contentview.swift is a basic struct showing the only screen in our app, content view. It looks like this. Struct content view conforms the view, var body, some sort of view, text, hello world. That's not a lot of code in there, but it already tells us a lot. First, you can see views are structs in Swift UI. This is not required, but it's strongly encouraged. Second, all views must conform to the view protocol. We no longer try and inherit from UI view. Third, that protocol requires a computed property called body. It returns the actual layout for the view. And it returns some view, which is a Swift feature called an opaque return type. It means one specific sort of view, but we don't really care what. And finally, inside our content view is a basic piece of UI called text. This is used to represent text strings in Swift UI, either directly as labels or indirectly as text inside navigation bars, buttons, and more. If you're running macOS Catalina or later, you should see a preview pane here on the right of Xcode. I'll press resume and it'll build my code and show it dynamically in that layout as I work. This updates as you type, which makes it a great way to see your changes as you work. In the event that it stops, which will happen whenever you make a mistake, you can press Option Command P to make it resume showing your layouts. If you don't have Catalina installed, you don't get a live preview and you need to run your code in the simulator instead. Now this basic content view created for us by Xcode is a single text view saying, hello world. In our app, this will actually show us a list of items from a menu. So we're going to use a list view instead. So I'll replace that simple text with this, a list of hello world, then text, hello world, and again, text, hello world, like that. And when the preview updates, you'll now see the equivalent of a UI table view with three pieces of text, all saying hello world. This is a static list view. We're sending in three pieces of fixed data so it interprets them as three rows in the table. In our app, the menu will contain a list of items that can be ordered, and tapping one of them will show a new screen with details about that order item. This works just like a new UI kit. We wrap our table in a navigation control. So, in Swift UI, it's called a navigation view. So I'll write navigation view before the list, then put the entire list inside it, and end the brace outside the list, like that. And this thing, a navigation view, combines the display styling of UI navigation bar and the view controller stack behavior of UI navigation controller. So now we can see a large space above our list, which is where the navigation bar is. However, it's empty because we haven't given it a title yet. To fix this, we need to learn something important about Swift UI called modifiers. These look like regular Swift methods, but they're more complex because they actually change what they apply to. In simple terms, if you have some text and apply the foreground color modifier, you don't just get back some text that happens to have some color, you actually get back a different type. In this case, we want to apply a navigation bar title modifier to our list view, which accepts some sort of text to show in the navigation bar. So we'd write this, title menu, like that. And you see immediately, menu appears above our table in the preview pane. Now, yes, this modifier is attached to the list rather than to the navigation view. It's modifying the list right here and not down here. Think of how it's at the title of a UI view controller rather than try to a title of a UI navigation controller. Now, if you try running the app, you'll see it works exactly as we would expect. Let's build and run now. So there's our title, our three rows, I can drag around and I scroll, it'll shrink at the top and say menu like that and back again, exactly as you'd expect. One of the great things that SwiftUI does is give us modern system behavior by default. So we get these large navigation bar titles as standard. Now static text works fine when you have fixed table cells, but in our case, we have lots of menu items to load across a number of sections, breakfast, mains, dessert, and drinks. 
What we really want to do is load our menu data from JSON, then use that for our list items. And that's actually not too hard to accomplish. First, we need to load our data. The helper.swift file you already imported contains code for loading codable JSON from the app bundle, which is perfect for loading our menu.json file. So I'm going to add a property to content view. Let menu equals bundle.main.decode an array of menu section.self from the file called menu.json, like that. Next, we need to make our list go over the sections in our menu. This is done by using a for each block, which loops over items in an array and repeats whatever's inside. So in our list here, we could say for each menu, open, and then push these three texts inside the for each like that. Now the opening braces after list here and for each here actually signify the start of closures. And in the case of for each, Swift UI will pass into the closure each section from the menu array so we can configure it. So we need to accept that section by modifying the code to this. For each menu, open brace, section, in. Accept that parameter coming into the for each. And that almost works. But there's one last thing we need to do. Swift UI needs to know how to identify every cell in our table. It needs to know exactly which is which so it can add and remove things for us if we ask. When we had a static list, this wasn't a problem because it could see there were always three text fields. But now we have a dynamic list, we need to tell it something about each section that makes it unique. If I go ahead and open menu.swift again here, you'll see structs, menu section, and menu item. Both of them have an ID using a UUID, a universally unique identifier. This is perfect for our use, because it means every menu item in every section has a unique ID so SwiftUI can know which is which. We can tell SwiftUI to use those identifiers by making our two types conform to the protocol identifiable. This protocol has only one requirement, which is that conforming types must have a property called ID that can identify them uniquely. We already have that, so just adding identifiable to those two types is enough. So I'll say menu section is codable, comma, identifiable, like that. And menu item is codable and equatable, and then identifiable, like that. And now if I run the code, we should see 12 rows containing hello world. Boom, like that. And that might not be what you expected. What's changed is that we now have a dynamic list and our for each back in content view over here, this thing will execute the body of its closure, three text views, once for every item in our menu sections. We have four sections, breakfast, mains, dessert, and drinks. And each one's been given these three text views. So we end up with 12 in total. To fix this, we're going to ask for one text view per section and give it the name of our section to display. So we have for each menu section. I'll delete these last two hello worlds and replace the first one with text section dot name like that. And I'm going to resume the preview on the right and we should see it looking quite nice. Boom, breakfast, mains, dessert, and drinks. Now let's add the items inside each section. This is another for each inside the section for each. So we have a list, our for each menu for the sections, then our section name, and below that, I'm going to add for each section dot items. Let's hide that left hand bar, make some more space. There we go. Item in this time, text item dot name show the items alongside the section names. And now you can see breakfast, maple French toast, stack of pancakes, power muesli and so forth, then mains, penne carbonara. So you'll now see lots of table rows with some containing section names and some containing menu item names. While this works, it's not ideal. It doesn't create any sort of visual structure in our table. So we're gonna break it up. The standard UI kit way of doing this is with table view sections and Swift UI gives us the section view just for that. 
So we can replace our section name here with a section using that name for its header, which is the text at the start of the section. The inner for each, this one here, is then inside the section, so Swift UI will understand how we've grouped things together. So we'll replace this text here with section header text section dot name, like that. And then indent section items in one level and use a closing brace. So the for each here lies inside the section. And you can see on the right, immediately we now have these section titles. It looks much, much better. As you can see, Swift UI's lists give us the plain style of table view by default, but we can change that by adding another modifier after navigation bar title down here. We could say navbar titles menu, but we're also going to say dot list style is grouped list style, like that. Push it all in so we get a nice indented style just like that, as you'd expect.